So this, in my opinion, is a much better way of playing power chords. Or major chords with a root on the, on the fifth string. This is a D, by the way. You might have seen it played like this. Which is cool, this works. But my wrist is all bent. It's pretty uncomfortable. And it's a bar chord, so you have to clamp. That right? makes, makes you tired. Right? When you use your pinky to bar instead of your ring finger, your wrist becomes straight. This is like a natural extension. This is my relaxed hand. And this is one of those power chords or major chords. Now when I first played them, my fingers were out here and they stayed out here for a long time, months and months, and eventually they learned to relax. You can also mute the bottom string, thumb over the neck. Also looks cool. And uh, more than all that, so comfort, yeah, that's very important. And then you can also put your index finger, I mean, excuse me, your ring finger down on that fifth string and slide up into the inversion. And from there, you can play all this Hendrix stuff. So you'll be playing some chords, I don't know, G. instead of your ring finger so now you might be thinking my pinky just doesn't bar my pinky I try I send it the mental signal and then it just doesn't bar yeah that kind of, that's kind of how it feels so don't think of the pinky itself barring like yeah you can make this movement but it's more like start by forgetting about chords and just grabbing the guitar see if you can grab it and then rotate your wrist so that all these knuckles come out and you kind of see that your fingers are barring the guitar now because you do that so think of that like you're doing a, you know when you squeeze somebody's forearms what is that called like doing an Indian do an Indian on the guitar and get that pinky to be in that position and then try to wiggle your way you're gonna be barring um, what am I barring here the third fourth and fifth strings or so with my index finger and then the second third and fourth strings with my pinky and if these fingers are out here, that's cool. I don't know, when you start practicing, it might sound like this. That's kind of normal. You have to go through that. If you go through it and you make it through that, it's well worth it, right? Now, from this, you could argue I can play it like this, so I don't need to learn that. But now, here you have a change of positions. Your wrist is down and, and out, like for bar chords. And then, and then it's over the neck for your soloing stuff. With this, you're already over the neck. It's, it's more efficient. You can make things sound very rock and roll, a lot of rolling stones. A lot of rock and rollers will go to just this position, play it like it was an A chord. And then do embellishments. But they're really, when they're doing this, they're seeing this chord, and they're just playing the ring finger part of it. I like to use both. Bar with your pinky, slide into the inversion. Why is it called an inversion? It's because we have a third in the bass. You don't need to know why. It works over any major chord. Start playing simple progressions using this new bar chord. Maybe to F, then to C. And yeah, you can do these on the bottom strings. You could play a G like that. So all your power chords on the bottom with the root on the bottom string on the sixth string. You can do them this way as well. A little more uncomfortable, especially all the way down in F. But it's cool. So again, we were doing D, F, C, and G. Let's try that.
eventually improvise using that Hendrix stuff, which I'll talk about in a different video. This one is just about starting to play power chords and bar chords with your pinky doing the bar. It's difficult, but it's well worth it. And then you'll find that you can use your pinky for soloing a lot more too after that. Alright, thanks for watching. And remember to go see a local teacher.